I would like at this point to introduce our next uh, guest. Uh, he's not really a guest, he's a family member now because we have met him once already. We are going to meet him again a number of times before we close this uh, course. Lenny, he is going to take us through the first two lessons and also demonstrate how these are going to be working with our uh, login onto the Research for Life platform. So it's going to take us through the unified content portal and also how to search across the whole of Research for Life using Samoan and Google Scholar. Uh, thank you and welcome, Lenny. Okay, thank you. I think everyone can hear me. Uh, pardon the background on the screen. That's for a webinar tomorrow. Okay, okay. so let me share my screen and we'll move right into this. Okay, and that gave me a thank you speakers and discussion people gave me a little time to get organized and set up. Okay, so let me go to the slideshow from current slide. All right, so we want to talk about the new unified content portal, search across all research for life using Summon and Google Scholar. And I think there are some points where we're talking about how to download citations. So that C probably is relevant to some of your discussion you were having. I assume everyone can hear me clearly enough. Uh, it's a little different accent, but yes, that's, uh, we, can, we can live with that. So let me go on quickly here. Research for Life, Content Portal, and Summon and Google Scholar. So there are, this is a little unique because many of you are in agriculture. So you can go into either the Unified Content Portal or Agora directly because Agora has a separate platform. The reasons for that are dealing with UN agencies and I don't exactly understand what happened, but Agora and Artie have separate platforms, but they all are available from the Unified Content Portal. And I think my example shows that. So you log in and you get, uh, Initially, you have the little symbol that's dark blue and you enter your login information. Fred has sent me login information from one of the institutions, in, maybe his institution. So what I will in the demos will actually show what it is like for you in terms of the environment, in terms of what is displayed. Okay, so okay, we have me... logged in, yes? Yeah, it's actually the temporary login I secured for this training oh, great. program. It's a temporary login that we're using for the uh, the program, the train yeah. and trainer of trainers program. Terrific. Yes. Yes. But it is one for Ghana, so it will represent what is available there because we know about the issue with publishers granting and not granting access. So now I have clicked on the little symbol, and you can see that it is now a stick figure, and it's showing that I have logged in, although in this case it's with a different login. Okay. If you scroll down this Welcome to Research for Life page, you get the links to all five programs. Three links will be into the Unified Content Portal for Hanari, Gowali, and Oare. Agora and Ardi have links to separate content portals, but it really doesn't matter, okay? I am going to click on, I am now, logging into Research for Life, I've logged in, and I'm going to click on Collections. And right there, you can see you can get to Agora that way. Uh, later on, we'll talk about Summon. It doesn't matter where you search for Summon, you're going to get the same results, okay? So we have clicked on Agora, and this is what displays. For, actually, for the three programs, you'll see uh, a portal that'll say welcome to Agora, but this is through the Unified Content Portal. It shows you right there, content associated with Agora. Okay, there's, uh, if you click on home, you get out of Agora and go back to the Unified Content Portal. You can see in collection, you can click on Agora that way too. Okay, uh, you can see one of the keys is this box up here, search across all of Research for Life. And that's what we will talk about later. Also very important is the access key. I'm sure some of you have used this already. And this shows you what is available 
and what isn't available in your institution. And you can see right here, there's a little green box with a P and that means that you have access. Okay, uh, we have the content drop down menu, journals, books, reference sources, databases, free collection, publishers, recent resources and subject. What I have to stress here due to the unique way that we have set up Research for Life, you are searching the content of what the publishers are granting. You're not doing a keyword search here. You have to go back to the summon symbol or click in this box to search across all of Research for Life. And what that does is it links to the full text that is available in your institution. Okay, so we're gonna click on databases and you can see that uh, Hanari has 31, Agora has 32. If you only wanna see the Agora databases, you click on that little box there. You see the little magnifying glass, which displays this search across all research for life. And again, you can uh, limit it by collection, publishers, language, and subject. So we will open this and you can see now that we have gone to journals and it's very similar. What we have done here though, is limit the search to environmental sciences and John Wiley and Son journals, the publisher, John Wiley and Son journals. And this is showing you how many journals you have and you could limit it to Agora or you can look at the whole total of 99, okay? Uh, Agora will actually give you access, I think it's 99 or 98 there. I hope I'm not going too fast. If you wanna get out of this and see all the journals list, you click on this and this. There's a flaw here that we recognize. We're missing the A to Z list of journals, which used to be very useful in the old portal, and we will be adding that, okay? We'll be adding that hopefully in the next uh, rendition of the update of the content portal. It was and, just a question of priority. And Lenny, Is there not, a question? not just yes. that, Lenny. Uh, I've also realized one thing that is missing. You know, we used to be able to set the page range. Uh, that is how many items to be displayed on a page. But oh, now it just gives us a tab more and more, and uh, you can do the control F to do a direct search for a particular item, unless you go and click on more and then scroll to look for it. Yeah, there is a way to do a search for an a, a individual item, and we'll get to that. All right. Okay, through search across content. Okay. Uh, publishers. Publishers has the A to Z list. Okay. So you can go in and click on a publisher and see if you have access or not. Uh, there are some publishers do books and Cochrane Library and journals separately, John Wiley there, and some publishers lump any books and journals they have together, okay? So let me go on here. What's valuable is this browse by subjects, okay? And uh, there are 90, 193 different subjects. So this could be very useful. You can see right away there are some that are relevant for uh, Agora for the agriculture world. Agriculture research sciences, I think there's one animal husbandry. So you can see right away, aquatic sciences may even be relevant. And you can click on these and see the journals or books in that area. Okay, in that discipline. We've clicked on biodiversity, and you can see that for Agora, there are 96 journals defined in biodiversity. For Hanari, there, no, 36. For Hanari, they also say there are 36. And you can go in this way if you choose. Uh, you can limit your books to uh, publication date too. Okay, so your content. Uh, again, you have a series of filters in the left-hand column that you can apply. And again, anytime you need to go back and get rid of them, you click on home. And you click on the X's to remove the specific filters you have listed. Okay, we've gone through that quickly. We'll do more with the demonstration. Here we are, search content. We have downloaded what we call the hamburger menu. I'm trying to minimize something on my screen. There we go. Okay, 
and you can see search content and personal sign-in, and both of those are valuable. If you go to use a mobile phone, you will see uh, this, the three bars for this uh, menu come up, and that's how you go into content collections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it is condensed and, and it becomes much more uh, vertical. Okay, so here we are, search content. You have uh, publication type. Uh, you can search by all fields, publication time, author. Notice, no keyword search here. Okay, author name, uh, ISSN number, ISBN number, and then you have the option of relevance, new, new is first, old is first. We have done a quick search for the title in all fields, public health. So you will see here, you have, oh, where's my little cursor? There it is, a journal, a journal, a publisher, and then a journal. So this is all done from that search content and it's all field search, okay, but you could do title publication title to limit it a bit. Uh, this is the sign-in page for the personal sign-in that also was on the, uh, the menu and we've clicked on personal sign-in now and you can see there's a way to sign individually and there's a way to sign in for new users. And then if you click on the stick figure of the human here, way down at the bottom it says my profile, log in, lock out. What can you do with this? Okay, it has some useful features. Again, though, it's not dealing with the keyword searching world. Okay, so here we are. We have displayed our search. And then next action comes up. You can, you can have a series of alerts that you manage. You can save this screen as an alert. You, you can save this screen uh, so you have your search history that you can view. And you can create a search alert. So let's say you put in uh, agronomy, any new books or journals or other resources on agronomy, you will be alerted, okay? If you did a search, a search for the term agronomy. Okay, I hope that's helpful. This is probably, uh, again, it's from the hamburger menu here and down below you see reports and you see country offer. Uh, I didn't have time last night to switch it to Ghana, but you could go, and we will do this in the demo. You go in, you put world, uh, you put in Ghana, you put in uh, university. I assume most of you are in universities, university uh, college, and then you get uh, a list. It shows you exactly how many books, journals, reference sources, and databases are available, and then you get a long uh, list of all the titles. There are some symbols there, what's available to everyone, what may be available next calendar year, what may go away, unfortunately, as the publishers choose to grant access or not. So you, we will look this up in, in, in a few minutes, okay? A uh, couple other things. We have a help page with tips, contents about research for life, frequently asked questions, access, if you click on the top of the initial Research for Life page, you can get to all those options. And then we have a link to our training material. And this is very useful. Uh, there are many uh, useful, relevant training presentations that are available to you to download. It's Creative Commons license. 4.0 share alike, I think is the term, and so that you can use them, edit, edit them, adapt them for any workshops that you are doing. If we have time, maybe we'll take a look at some of them. We're trying our best, <coughs> excuse me, to keep these up to date. Uh, there'll be a new batch coming, a new update because we've uh, revised some of them due to the new unified content portal and some other issues that we had we updated the sum in one too okay shall i stop here and do a demonstration or should i go on to summit that's up to the organizer please uh, go on with the sum one day okay the demo for get done with this and then we'll go on and we'll do all kinds of searches okay summon google like search engine 
fast, reliable relevancy ranking results. Search terms in a single box. There's an advanced search option. Results are displayed with links to full text and preview. Searches can refine, limit. Can, searches can be refined, limited by content type, discipline, publication date, and other options. It doesn't have all the options, say, a PubMed has, but it still can be useful. Citations from searches can be saved with options to email, print, or export to bibliographic management software. Okay, why is this so important? What Summon does is it looks at the country offers defined by the publishers, where they identify which countries, in this case Ghana, they will grant access to in their resources. So it goes into the summons knowledge base and reflects all the publisher's offers. That means if it says you should have full text and it's not working right, it's, you have not made a problem. It's a problem with linking to the publisher. We'll look at that a bit later, okay? So two ways to get into uh, the summon search tool. Either the box when you go into the initial page of a unified content portal. And as I said, this one could say, welcome to uh, Agora, if you choose to only search in Agora. I tend to say search uh, using, it, uh, using the unified content portal, because you never know what will come up. Uh, the search results could be a little different. Or you click on the little magnifying glass and this box appears and in both cases, you can go to the advanced search option, okay? So that you will, regardless of content or collection or portal, it will, you, it will open up everything that is available in Ghana in your specific institution, okay? We're using the Unified Content Portal. Uh, fortunately, I think one of the examples later on for I think it's Scholar is an agriculture one, but this one uses hospital infections and in developing countries. Okay, so we get results of 1,863 sorted by relevance. You can sort it by uh, last published, first published. Okay, right here on the left are a series of filters or how to refine your search. They use a different term. Look, you have journal articles, you have book reviews, you have publications, you have book chapters, okay, and you have books and ebooks. So this is pulling up not only the journal articles, but also the book chapters. So if you're in a, if a, a lecturer wants new material for a presentation for his course, this is a good way because he can uh, get to the book chapters that are a good summary of the information and he could adapt and use that material. Uh, also for students who need background information, the book chapters can be very useful. So right here we have the box, preview and full text online. Okay, here we have, uh, once you add filters, you can clear them very much like in the Unified Content Portal. And here you have content type, you can limit it to journal articles, you can put in dates you want to search, you can uh, put the last 12 months, the last five, uh, three years, the last five years, okay? So these are ways to, nothing unique, nothing especially creative or different, but these are ways to filter or refine your search. We have clicked on the preview, which is very useful. As you all know, you would like to look at this before you decide to download an article or not. And uh, last but not least, and I think this is very useful, you can save items in your cart, and then you can print, email, or export it to bibliographic software. So you click on the little save items icon here. I just did six in this example, and then you click on the cart itself. Okay, I think I have an example of that later on. Uh, just to mention that there is a way of combining all these terms in one screen by using the advanced search option, okay? You can limit items to full text online, scholarly material, uh, open access items only. 
I think I failed to mention something. Let me go back. You see this box here? Add results beyond your library's collection. This will add some open access material. So this is how you can broaden your search. This search might go from 1,863 results up to, uh, I think I did it once, it was 3,300. I'd also like to know something else. Uh, we have five collections, but sometimes something comes up in social sciences, something may come up in psychology, something may come up in education. Use Summon, okay? If you can't identify the books you want or the journal or journals you want, and you want articles and book chapters, use Summon. I did a search on, and it's very relevant, distance learning and universities. There were 31,000 journals, book chapters, articles, and whatever else. Uh, journal articles, book chapters, books itself. So you need to search here. It looks at everything available in Ghana, and it can be very useful for subjects that you don't think are that, are not listed in one of the collections. It would be hard to say, well, it's education. That doesn't really fit in uh, Goali. It doesn't fit in Aware. It doesn't fit in Akora. But you can still do these searches. So I wanted to make that comment. Uh, where was I? Let me click on to, oh, I took the slide. Uh, okay. So once you go to the cart and we can do this, you can send uh, an email and there is a way of downloading the material to a reference manager. And okay, I thought I had the slide here, it's not here now. So let's go to, you've seen how you access, uh, easily access Summit. Let's go look at a database. Let's go look at Google Scholar. The reason everybody can go right on the internet and go into Google Scholar, right? Why are you doing it through here? It is mapped to the Summon architecture. In other words, if you click on databases, you scroll down the list, you find Google Scholar and you go in, it's going to have links to full text that is available to you from Research for Life, okay? So we have done, very fortunately, uh, the search is relevant to agriculture and also environment. Water pollution and pesticides. So we have done that search. I put in quotes, water pollution in quotes, so that those two terms have to be together and it narrows it a bit, okay? As you know, Google Scholar's results are huge, okay? And says, so there are 141,000 articles listed in relevancy order. But what you see here is you can limit it. There are a couple different options to limit it uh, since 2020, 19, and a custom range for articles, search by relevance, search by date. You can exclude patents if you choose to, and you can also create an alert. So you get some options, right? What is so interesting is in the right-hand column, you see links to full text that is either uh, an open access journal or also ones that are available via Research for Life. Okay, I lost my cursor, here we are. Research for Life, Research for Life. So if the journal publisher is granted access in Ghana, and I know there are some publishers that don't, unfortunately, you will get the link to the full text right here, okay? Uh, We've gotten an example from Wiley. I don't think Wiley grants access in your country, unfortunately. And we have gone into the 360 link and you can get into the full text that way. You've gone right to the Research for Life 360 link, but you've gone from Google Scholar because you logged in through Research for Life in the databases. There are some options here, okay. Uh, you can set up a profile, and I think this is uh, okay. You, all, you, you look at the horizontal bars, what we call the hamburger menu. You can look, set up your profile. You have my library. You have alerts, metrics, advanced search, and settings. Okay, so I think there's a slide. Okay, 
So what you have to do is go key features of my library of learned advanced searches. I don't have the slide here, which shows you how to set up uh, an account, but you go into your Google, you go into Google and you ask to set up a Google account. Okay, and it'll talk you through it. So the first option is my library. I've clicked on this little star in the search and it lists it. I have clicked on these different articles and in my library, it's telling you it is searched from water pollution and pesticides. Later on, you can add more citations to a specific search that's listed. So this is in my library. Uh, a second useful option is this little down arrow and it says create an alert. You want to know when new articles come on water pollution and pesticides. You want to mail it to yourself and you can create an alert. So this is keeping you up to date on the material that is coming in on your subject. All right, uh, export citations. Uh, from Scholar, can expectations, Bibli, Bib Text X, EndNote Ref Manager, and RefWorks. And thank you, Fred, for adding Zotero and Mendeley can import the Bib Text format. Okay, so you click on the two little quotes bars and you eventually can send it. A uh, second screen will display with five key. Uh, five key uh, citation. Okay, I'm I'm blocking, but you it's it's how you want your citations to list. Okay, uh, and then down at the bottom, you see you can the ones that you've clicked on. You can click on bibliotext and get a file uh, .ris file that can be imported into your into a collection in your software. Okay, a final highlight is advanced search and it's it's okay, it's got some limitations. I don't think it's uh, as sophisticated as in Summon or for sure in PubMed. Okay, troubleshooting and support. Have you talked at all about this, Fred? Because then I can skip it and we can go to do some searches. It's up to you. Yes, you can skip it. Okay, terrific. You're not in contact the help desk. If something's green and you should have it and it doesn't work and the publisher is asking you for money, contact the help desk. Okay, so we are done here. I can close, let me stop sharing. This should be easy enough this way. And now we're going in to share. We're going into Research for Life. Okay, the first thing I want to do, because I didn't have a demonstration of it, I'm clicking on Agora, okay? So now it is only the health-related material. But as I say, if you do this search across Research for Life and Summon, you will get the same results in any of them. Could someone suggest a search? If not, I go back to my water. I have something in chat. It's great, Google Colifer and Howl. At least we get more full text. That is correct, if it, and it usually works correctly. Okay, uh, somebody give me a search. You can see my searches that I've used. Uh, disaster management among health care practitioners. Excuse me? Disaster management in health facilities in Ghana. Um, these, uh, are, these are Gura. It's gonna be faster if you put oh, okay. that. If you put it in the chat, I so can the, quick the, copy the, paste it. The, okay. the econ economic burden of first infection, pest, pest infection. Okay, just go to chat and type it down and I can copy Great. and paste it. Okay. That'll be a lot faster because I'm going to ask you how to spell things and things like that. Okay, anyone else that wants to do a search in Agora, put uh, put it in chat here. Oh, thank you. Thank you much, Dominic. Okay, see, I just copy it and I minimize that and I paste it right in here. 
Okay, economic burden of pest infections on rice plantation, very relevant. I'm clicking enter. Okay. Now remember, we're in Agora. Okay, and it's giving you 39 results. Uh, should we make it a little broader? I take out economic burden and see what happens. Yes, no, here we go. Yes. Okay. Okay, that made a significant difference. Okay, it's by relevance. You have 690 journal articles. You have five book chapters. You have two conference proceedings and you have seven references. Okay, again, if you wanted to save these items, click, click, click. Okay, just as a demonstration. Have, please remember the number, the 709. We're gonna do the same search. And okay, remember, this is only limited. This is uh, the resources in the Unified Content Portal are, listed, are limited to agriculture, but we have gone to the sum and search, which is searching everywhere. Okay, so now we click on, oh, okay, hold on. We have four in the box. A temporary folder has been created. Here they are. You can export them too. Okay, here we are again. We can export them to bibliotext, to the bibliographic software, and if I had opened my Zotero, it might go right. Yes, you see how it's gone directly to my Zotero and I would put it in one of my collections. Okay, so that works very well. Uh, let me take the same search. Let's see if this works right. Okay, we are going back to here. We're going into, we are now in the Unified Content Portal. We're putting the same search in. Let's see if we get 709 again. Yes, so you can see you can search from anywhere. You're gonna get all the material in agriculture. Would we like to do one more search in Summon? Someone want to suggest one? And again, let's see, full text online. This should work correctly for, you know, I do have a little better, ah, you see? This is a problematic one. It's telling you, you need to buy it. Let's see if the full text is available. Uh, okay, this is one you would have to report, okay? Because you're not buying a PDF and you're not buying the journal subscription, this is, just giving you the summary. Okay, so we have hit a problem with this one. Let us try the second one. And that could be reported because it says it's, it's all the Springer leak ones and they're not giving you access. Okay, so this has not worked correctly today with this password. All right, let's go to, let's see if, if this is Springer again, the same thing's going to happen. Okay, journal full text, same problem. Springer is not granting you access, but it's being listed here. I would report this to the help desk saying, why is it saying full text is online and I don't have access? Okay, so let us go on. Do we have another search to do or should we go on to Google Scholar? Uh, let's try Google Scholar. Okay. Same yeah. search. I know they, they've been online for two hours. There's been a lot of discussion. So let me go on directly to Google Scholar. Okay, I'm back in Research for Life. Content, databases. Okay, I, unfortunately I have to scroll down. Oh, it's here on the first page at the bottom. Let's see. Let me put in the same search. Okay, economic, what was it? Economic, here we can be more for a night. Burden, is that right? Yeah, okay. 
So here we are, we have uh, 18,000. Let's see, and sometimes here's a whole list of links and some of them would work and it's not showing any from Research for Life. Here we are. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, researchgate.net, uh, Research for Life has access to that. Here it is, it's a, it's a directory of open access journal, that's okay. And we want the full text. Okay, here we are. Okay, abstract. Let's see, where is the PDF? This is from Elsevier, it must be an open access one of theirs. It's up there, view PDF. Uh, I'm just missing it. Purchase, purchase. I'm for some reason I'm ah, purchase view. Here we are. No, we're back to the same problem. Okay, all right. We're not having much luck today. Let's go back to the search if we can. The results. No. Is this the previous one? Okay, return to summit. Ah, no, I've lost my scholar search. Okay, 360 link. No, I lost my scholar search. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> What shall we do from here? Go back. Okay, let's try one more search in Google Scholar. Somebody put something in chat. Okay, if someone can let me, let me see what's in chat. All right. We have one more suggestion coming up. Anybody, I know you've been listening for two hours, so at this point it gets a little, uh, uh, you're ready for a break. You're ready for the session to end, okay? Uh, no other suggestions. Let's put in water pollution and pesticides, okay? Let's, I'm going to put that in. I'm going to copy. I'm sorry. I could, could have typed right in. Now, go back to Scholar. Put it here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so some of these have uh, their links to ready. Research should get full view, academic edu. Uh, you're not getting too many from, here we are. Let's see if this one works or if I'm not having any luck today. Okay. Browse journal, browse journal. So you'd have to go into science. And if I click on this, then we'd have to look up issue volume 158, issue 3803. Okay, so we go volume 58, here we are. And then we go from here and we search within this and pull up that issue of science, okay? First release, okay. So that's as far as we get with that. Uh, I know what I wanted to do. Yes, I did. I wanted to go to here. I wanted to go to the reports, country offer, okay? We're going to Ghana.
and we're going to, shall we be a university faculty and college? I think many of you are in that category. And here we are. This is showing you, you have 51,000 books, 7,510 7, journals, 46 reference forces, and nine databases. And if you scroll down, you'll see things like, unfortunately, only Elsevier one reference source clinical king. Clinical key is available. Elsevier open is available, but not Elsevier complete list. Okay, so you're limited here. There's one, okay. So I'm sure too that another one that does not grant access is Springer Nature. Springer Nature, oh, it is listing 103 journals. So that's good news. Okay, Springer is available within Ghana. That's very good news. Maybe another one would be uh, John Wiley. Okay, John Wiley's journals are not available. So this is how you can really tell what you have access to. And that's why your numbers here are not as high as uh, if I went in with a master trainer uh, password, my numbers would be higher here. Okay, not so much in books, but more in the journals. I think it would be 11,000 something. Okay, so that's where the, the, the dynamic of publishers granting access in specific countries or not really comes into play. Uh, I think it says, it says, it is 11, seven and four, 1158 in Ghana. So do we have any more quick questions or Fred, do you want to sum, sum up where we went with this and make any other comments or suggestions? Yeah, thanks a lot. I, I think this last show from the reports uh, is a, a helpful tool to demystify why sometimes though we know we have access to research for life, some of the articles yeah. that we find are not accessible. So it's good for us to understand, even though someone will pick up uh, that document, uh, it depends on your institution and what it is, uh, the publisher is granting access to. But I realize, yeah, even though it is in okay. Ghana, I know we have a teaching hospital uh, like the HTH and their combination of uh, resources will be different from what you has has. And in that case, if I'm using a UHAS login credential, uh, someone may pick up a country instance for a document, but which perhaps the publisher doesn't allow UHAS to have, but may have uh, granted access to HTH. So I think those kinds of dynamics are the reason for some of the documents we come across that we still can't access. <laughs> but what right. do we do in those cases? You could be in a teaching hospital and if you went in with the regular university login, it would be different than if you said, okay, I am in the teaching hospital now. And that would change the dynamic. There are some publishers that grant access uh, uh, into the category level. Okay, and that's what happens with that. Uh, I know as a trainer, as an advocate for Research for Life, we're always, always talking with uh, the liaison for the scientific, technical, and medical organization, and we're saying, please try to convince the publishers to not be so restrictive. They're uh, they're trying to uh, get subscriptions, and the countries can really not afford them, and they have to look at the bigger picture. But I'm just one voice, and so are all of you voices. But Unfortunately, we cannot convince, uh, what is it? Uh, there's a difference in the publishers between the corporate responsibility people and the salespeople. And I, I know this from talking with individuals. 
And the corporate responsibility people would make the case saying, make this available. And the salespeople will say, well, we think we can uh, get some revenue. We can go into Ghana and talk all the universities yeah. into paying for our journals. And that's the real conflict there. I don't know if this helps you, but at least we can discuss it a bit. Okay, but in that case, um, is it possible that Research for Life can help with negotiations in case our institutions are interested in a particular database that the publisher won't automatically grant access to uh, through Research for Life? In terms of negotiation, can Research for Life help an institution? Uh, I don't. I don't think that's an area that Research for Life would can get involved in because okay. this is such a voluntary agreement, and we have to live with what the publishers do. We can encourage them on a broader policy level, but individually, I think that would get complicated, and it would could overwhelm us to be uh, the liaison between, a, say, a consortium and uh, a publisher. We might have contacts. We might say, can you talk to your publishing people and your salespeople and see if they can help and be reasonable? But but that would be more on an individual level, I think, unfortunately. But that's my opinion. I've not, I've not really asked that question. Oh, okay. Okay, there is, uh, if, there is, if you go, if, if Ghana were to get to be Group B, and then get so wealthy that they would be not eligible for research for life. There is a program for transition. Okay. And some of those issues may be addressed in that. Okay. All right. But I don't, uh, I'm unable to give you any positive answers on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Okay. 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 So, uh, it's lunchtime now for everybody. Yes. Uh, and, uh, I'm sh sure Fred appreciates you all uh, participating again in this session. It was two hours, correct? And I yes. heard some of the discussion was very interactive. So please keep up the great work and please continue to attend. Thanks a lot, Lenny. Okay. Yeah. So any questions coming up, uh, we'll draw your attention maybe in our next meeting. I'll give you the shadow.